you read other Canadian writers. Do you read Canadian critics? Uh, well, now, do you mean the academic critics or the newspaper critics? Well, both, perhaps. Oh, yes, yes. And do they help you, or why do you read them? Well, I read them because I want to find out what they're saying. Uh, but I wouldn't say that they help me particularly, because I don't think that critics generally do help writers. Uh, it's as uh, Thornton Wilder has said, you must be very, very careful with the critics who praise you and with the critics who blame you, because you begin to think about them too much, and pretty soon you'll find that, in a way, that critic is looking over your shoulder when you're writing, and in a certain way, he's writing your book. That's the end. In A Voice from the Attic, you're pretty harsh with critics, it seems to me. Yes. Um, and in that book, you talk about your hope for the development of a, of a clerisy, of an intelligent yes. uh, reading, reading public in Canada. Uh, if I could ask you two questions about that. Uh, do you still feel that harshly about, about the critics, that they don't really... I've forgotten the phrase you use now, but it's a very strong one, almost to suggest that you think that... Well, the general newspaper critics are pretty useless, and uh, the academic critics, the very best ones, are interesting because they themselves have imaginations, and the rest are just people who write rather bad books. Yes. Well, I do think that. And I wrote that, and I wrote it with a good deal of um, uh, strength, because nobody criticizes critics, and it's bad for anyone to be free of criticism. Now, critics, uh, I've known a lot of them personally, and they're extraordinarily touchy fellows. <laughs> and one of the things that really uh, hurts a critic dreadfully is if you suggest to him that he doesn't write very well, and yet we know it's very often true.